Good morning. Wow, whose church are we in? <laughs> Who feels at home in, right now in this church? No, it's wonderful. Very nice. This church really loves the moms that we get AC on Mother's Day, eh? Yeah, which mom has felt love today already? Kids, watch. Whoever's hand's not going up, you have to try better. <laughs> I didn't expect my mom to be in here today. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. <laughs> um, let's um, go into the bulletin a little bit for some announcements. First one, John and Eliana. They are still here. Today is their last Sunday. So let's thank them for the job they have done and for the friends that they have been to us as they head to Canada sometime this week. Um, lay minister election is coming up. Um, let's keep that in prayer and next Sunday. There is a paper in your bulletin to look a little bit over how fun and easy it is so that you can let your name stand for that. Let's um, pray over that and take it serious. That's an uh, important part in our church. Um, next one will be Linda Vista School is still in need for high school teachers. Please contact one of the board members or um, Principal Stanley if you can help in that way. And then June 9 through 11, Winkler, Manitoba is hosting EMMC gathering. Anybody interested in going, there's a website that you can search to get more information. The deadline to sign up for that is end of this month. School picnic is coming up Thursday, 2 p.m. Please bring sloppy joe meat for your family and a little bit extra, and supper will be at 5. And then junior youth is today at 3 to 5. Come prepared for water games. And then a while ago, Mission Board was looking for a teacher helper for Little Bliss, and that helper has come. Eva Hebert is planning to serve in that way. Let's also remember her in prayer as we, as they transition there. And then for youth announcements, it says here, Bible study, there has been a little bit of a change. The youth leaders want to take all the youth to San Pedro. <laughs> now you're listening, and I'll say the real truth. <laughs> um, Ultimate Frisbee is planning, is being planned for a Wednesday night, fun night, at the park. So remember that at the park instead of here at the church at 7.30 for fun night and frisbee and snack. And then also tonight at 7.30, there is a praise and worship. Here at this church, 7.30, praise and worship. Let's remember that. Let's um, pray before we go into singing this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful morning that you've blessed us. Thank you that we can come together like this as church to be encouraged and to be to praise you. I pray that that's what this morning would be as we sing songs to you and as we listen to your word. I thank you for this opportunity that we can do it in peace and that you are present here this morning. In your name we pray, amen. Worship team. <clears throat> If God is for us, who can be against us?
songs um, we're praying to God as telling acknowledging who God says we are and beautiful promises that are said in these words that we can speak to God and be confident in who God calls us to be Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all his love for me. All his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. Child of God, yes I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me, His grace on me. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me.
you guys can hear yourselves as well as I can hear you, but you are singing so amazingly the promises that God is speaking to you about being a child of God. And the next song, How Great Is Our God, let's belt it out, the praise to God, how great he is.
Lost and Singing. Thank you very much, worship team. Next, we'll have a special item that was set up by Stephanie Dick for Mother's Day. <clears throat> Good morning. You won't be able to find me because I'm back here in the booth. Um, but I put this slideshow together for all the moms. Moms are so important in shaping who we are. It's easy to forget to appreciate them or to let them know that we appreciate them. This song played yesterday as I was going about my household chores, and it reminded me how much I love and appreciate my own mom and everything she's done for me and taught me. Now, you'd be surprised how many moms had trouble finding pictures of themselves with their kiddos, so husbands and dads snap more photos. I hope you enjoy and do something special for the mothers in your life today, and thank God for them. Wow, that was special. Let's have a lot of wonderful moms in this congregation. Um, children are dismissed for a children's church. And can the ushers please get ready for offering? <coughs> Good 
Let's um, ask for God's blessing before we take this offering this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for providing for us. I thank you that we can work and provide for our families, and I thank you that you bless us richly. I pray that this morning we would have willing hearts to give back to you, and that it can be shared where you see fit. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for your gifts. We'll give over the rest of the time to Pastor Henry. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. It is good to be here this morning and happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much for putting that slideshow and that song together. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, to me, I, I could watch the whole thing, and once I seen a picture of uh, my mom and myself, and then it felt like there was a lump in my throat. So uh, it uh, made me feel special. So, uh, and it made me feel special to be able to have such a wonderful mom that, that raised me. So this morning, I do not have a, a Mother's Day message, but at the same time, I do want to remind us to uh, honor our mothers. And I want to read a, a couple of verses, and then I do have a short uh, writing here that I want to read to you. The verses are out of Ephesians chapter 6, 1 through uh, 3. It says, Children obey, your Lord, uh, sorry. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. The Bible tells us that if we honor our mamas, that it, uh, that it will go well with us and that we can have a long life on earth. So who wants to live a long life? I think most of us do, right? So the Bible tells us that if we will honor our parents, that will help that we can live a long life. So today we honor our mother. We honor our mother because she gave us life. We often forget this one little fact. She brought us into this world. She carried us for nine months. She went through the pain of childbirth to bring us into this world. We honor our mother because she gave us love. She was the first one to love us. She looked into those little eyes and fell in love with us. She loved us when we were unlovely. She loved us unconditionally. 
and loving us, she taught us how to love. We honor our mothers for giving us life lessons. She taught us how to tie our shoe and count, uh, shoes and count to ten. She taught us how to speak a language and sing songs. She taught, us how, uh, she taught us about the Lord and His Word. She taught us how to take care of her, ourselves. We honor our mother uh, for giving us liberty. There came the day when she uh, let us go, the first day of school, the first time spending the night at a friend's house, the first time we took the car or motorbike out by ourselves, and the last time we left home to go, to go and live in a different country or uh, move out on our own or to get married and move away. We honor our mother for giving us a, a legacy, something handed down. She taught us the things that her mother taught her, the stories of grandma and grandpa, uh, uh, the story, uh, a family history. Proverbs 31 verse 28 says, her children rise up and call her blessed. Let's bow our head for prayer. Holy God, we come before you and God, we come before you with a humbled heart. And Father, with, uh, today we are so grateful that you chose us. You chose all of us. And we are so grateful for the mothers in this room, for the mothers in this community, and for the mothers that have gone on to be with you already, that have gone ahead of us. We thank you so much for them. And Father, my prayer is that, that we would all take the time to honor those moms that are still around, the, mo the moms that are in our lives, that we would honor them. And Father, I pray that, uh, that your blessing, that your spirit would be with us here this morning and that you would speak in and through me. Father, may, may my words be pleasing to you, Lord. And Father, may you receive uh, glory and honor through everything that, that, uh, that I speak here, everything that we do today. And Father, I just uh, ask that you would be patient and, uh, with us and guide us. Pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Like I said, today the message is not a Mother's Day message. Uh, I do want to continue in the book of Romans. Uh, we've started a few weeks back in the book of Romans. In the book of Romans, we could easily span a full year in it, and, and possibly more than that. But I have chosen the, the, some highlights that I want to speak out of, uh, out of the book of Romans. And so far, we've talked about the problem of sin and how it separates us from God and how it separates us from, from people around us if we allow sin in our life. And we found that in Romans chapter 1. And then we also talked about the rescue from sin, how God rescued us from sin, how He sent His Son Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb, to rescue us from sin and to bring us back into a connection with Him, how we can be connected with Him again. And we found that in Romans chapter 5. And then last Sunday, we talked about the pursuit of righteousness out of Romans chapter six, uh, 6. And we talked about how dying to ourselves and be united with Christ. And we talked about how we don't need to do this by ourselves, that He sent the Holy Spirit to, to help us and to empower us to do that. And today, we want to look in Romans chapter 9, and we want to talk about how God uh, chooses us, how God has chosen us as people to, to fulfill his purpose here on earth. Romans chapter 9 is a, is a tough uh, a chapter. I've uh, spent a lot of time in this chapter this week, and it's, uh, it's hard to explain. It's hard to, to understand it fully. Uh, so I'm going to start uh, from verse 14, but before we read that, I just want to uh, say a little bit what's before verse 14. Paul talks about uh, Jacob and Esau and how the older brother would serve the younger brother. And then he quotes out of Malachi chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. It says, uh, uh, Jacob, I, uh, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. And uh, I will not go into that today, but I, I just wanted to lay that out so that it will make sense when we start reading in verse 14 here. Verse, verse 14, it says, What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not, therefore, depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For Scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very, for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. One of you will say to me, then why does God uh, still blame us? 
for who, can, for who is able to resist his will? But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purpose and some for common use? What if God, although choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the object of his wrath, prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make, his, to make the riches of his glory known to the object of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory, even us, whom he has also called, not only from the Jews, but also, also from the Gentiles. As he says in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people, and I will call them my, my loved one who is not my loved one. This far. Now, as I said, this is a tough scripture to understand, a tough uh, a passage to, to understand fully. What is Paul saying here? Now, one thing is clear right from the start here. God is in control. God has the last word. Let's never forget that. God is in control. But uh, Paul is talking about, uh, what Paul is talking about here is Paul it says, uh, talks about Moses and Pharaoh. And uh, Moses was a Jew, Pharaoh was a Gentile. Both were sinners, in fact, both were murderers. And both saw God's wonder. Yet Moses was saved and Pharaoh was lost. Uh, God raised up Pharaoh that he might uh, uh, reveal his glory and power. And he had mercy on Moses that he might deliver his people from uh, Egypt. And God chose Israel, the Israelites, and he condemned the Egyptians. And he did this because he is sovereign. He can do these things. And are we okay with not fully understanding that? Are we okay with if God wants to use people for di different purposes? Are we okay with uh, by not understanding why and how this fully works? Because God is sovereign. One thing I do know for sure is that God has chosen us. If you sit here today, God has chosen you. God has chosen you for a, a special purpose. And that is what we want to focus on today. We want to focus on God has chosen us. And there are several uh, points that I want to bring out. The first one that I want to talk about is how do we know that God has chosen us? And this is a, a very simple, uh, actually, but I'm going to go into that a little bit. See, we were created in His image. He created us different than He did the rest of the, the world, the rest of uh, everything. Like